Service Writing and Max Tracks, Part 2. Service Writing and Max Tracks includes entering customers and vehicles, writing repair orders and making estimates, upselling additional services, ordering parts, and finally cashing out the customer. In Service Writing Part 1, we covered entering customers, vehicles, and starting an RO. In Service Writing Part 2, we'll cover making estimates using kits, recommended services, and upselling the customer. In Service Writing Part 3, we'll review ordering and receiving parts, and finally, cashing out the customer. Let's open our existing RO. Here we're prompted to enter the mileage again, which we now have that the vehicle has been brought into the bay. Let's review a few of these links on the side. This repair order view is where we spend the vast majority of our time. The labor view and parts view are just different ways to review your RO with totals for labor and totals for parts at the bottom. The warranty link is where we can add additional warranties that pertain to just this RO or have a default warranty or two on every RO in addition to our standard warranty for the California tire pressure law as an example. Revisions are where we document authorization by the customer for additional work required by law in some states. Notes can be entered and saved with this RO and selected to be printed on the RO or not. Marketing is where we can assign marketing letters and postcards for the future. And miscellaneous, probably the second most viewed link after the repair order view. On the miscellaneous link, we can select a service writer, another sales tax rate, enter the mileage, a purchase order number if applicable, here is also where we can discount the entire RO, either a percentage or a flat dollar amount on parts and or labor. This is also where we can add, adjust, or remove supply charges and edit the RO date. The third most used is probably this link, the summary link. Here we can see the subtotals of all the charges on the RO, including add-on charges such as hazardous materials fees. Parts on order lists parts orders that have been submitted and received for this repair order and the status of those orders. We'll review this link in service writing part three. And checklists. Here we can select a checklist for this repair order that we can print for the technician to inspect and check off. And then we can enter the technician's findings and print this checklist for the customer to review. This is a great tool to find additional work and upsell services and needed repairs. Once the checklist is selected, we can click the Options button up here and print the technician checklist. We can also print the technician worksheet from the Options button as well, instead of from the OK Save button in the lower right. So let's say our technician performed an oil change on this vehicle and found the vehicle needs front brakes, a cooling system flush, and will be due for a timing belt in 10,000 miles. As part of the service writing workflow, we can enter the additional work into the body of the RO to start. I'll click the recommended button to select the work that is needed. Front brakes, they need brakes now, so I will enter zero days, OK, and I will select to add this recommendation to the RO. And again, a cooling system flush, and I'm adding from the recommended button so that my lead in text says this was a recommended service instead of a customer request or a vehicle problem. We'll take a look at that in a moment and a timing belt. I'll select miles from today and enter 10,000 miles. And this recommended service is for the future, so I'll just click on close. Now the timing belt is going to show as a recommended service on the RO for the future without a dollar amount 
as I'm not looking up the parts and labor and creating an estimate for that service. However, for these, I'm going to write up the estimate for the brakes and the cooling system flush. And I actually have pre-made generic kits for both of those services to get me started. And there may be vehicle specific kits with the correct parts for the brakes. Let me explain how these kits work. I'll highlight the brakes reason for service line and click the kits button. I'll start by looking at kits specific to this year, make and model. And I don't have any created yet that would have the actual parts for the brake job in it. So I will click on the generic kits and this will at least get me a ballpark estimate and click OK. Notice the brake pads don't have a part number. The spot here is blank. That's because this is a part placeholder with an estimated price to get us in the ballpark. Next, I'll highlight the cooling system service reason for service. Click kits again. Here I will go straight to my generic kit list since there aren't any parts involved in this service. Select the one with DexCool and OK. I will now replace the part placeholder for the brake pads with the actual parts from an online catalog. Highlight the part placeholder, right click, and select to replace part from, I'll choose my factory motor parts catalog. Maxtrax is sending over the vehicle information in the background, so only parts for this year make model and engine will display. And I'll select the actual brake pads I would use, add, order review here in the lower right. We don't place the order from here, and we select add items to RO. Here we have a notice that the actual selling price of the brake pads, according to my preset part price matrix applied to factory's online catalog, is higher than my placeholder price. I'll choose to use the actual price. Maxtrax has now created a part master record for these brake pads in the background. The red circle and slash means that we do not have the parts available in stock. Now we need to get authorization for this work before we actually order the parts. And we will place the order from within Maxtrax, not directly on Factory's online catalog website. We'll review the parts ordering process in Service Writing Part 3. I can click this minus button to collapse the services, and here I can tell the customer how much each additional service will cost. Let's say the customer authorizes the brakes, but wants to do the cooling system service later. We would highlight the reason for service line for the cooling system service, right click, and save this as a recommended service. We could save that cooling system service as a subestimate. Instead, if we didn't want that service to show as a recommendation on the RO, but we did want to save the service so it could be added to a future RO for this vehicle. I usually save the estimates for additional work as a recommended service. So the recommended service prints on the customer's RO with a dollar amount total for the job. I can add the recommendation into my marketing letters and Maxtrax will prompt me to upsell that service in the Make New Appointment Wizard the next time the customer comes in. Click OK, enter the number of days until the recommended service should be done, and click OK. If you did save the work as a subestimate, you could print that subestimate out on a separate sheet of paper and staple it to your RO, just a thought. We can also print a separate page listing the recommended services as another option. Now the quotes over here, these are generated outside of the RO from the write a quote button. If let's say the customer called in for an estimate and we didn't have an open RO to build the estimate in. So just like a sub estimate or a recommended service, we can select to add a quote to an open RO from these buttons. 
A few more things to note on this screen. We can click the customer name to access their customer record, see if they have an outstanding balance, look up their telephone number, make any changes needed to their information, and note the red customer alert down here. This means that there's a special note we should review in their customer record. Click on the customer alert. This takes us to the notes alert section of their customer record. No checks. We can click on the vehicle in the upper right to get the engine specs, VIN, manufacture date, and any additional vehicle information. After we get approval for the additional work, we would save the RO and built into the workflow, we would enter a revision to document the approval for additional work by the customer. How contacted, the telephone number, the revised amount, and the reason for the additional amount. Now we would get a warning that some of the parts on this RO are not in stock and need to be ordered. We'll review ordering parts online and the parts order form in Service Writing Part 3. And this concludes the lesson on Service Writing and Max Tracks Part 2.